Welcome. Welcome everyone to episode 173 of the Trust the Plan podcast. I'm Nick. And I'm Jim. And we trust the plan, the plan, the plan. Always. And we're excited right now because spring break yeah. has arrived, right? Yeah, absolutely. You can always use a nice break the time of year, right? <laughs> yeah, we've been grinding the, all year. The, yeah. the winter yeah. starts wearing on you and spring break seems to come at a good time. We're, we're 50s. I, we got a t-shirt on here. Yeah. Subscribe, right? <laughs> There you go. Yeah, that's how you get it. And let us know because, yep. you know, YouTube doesn't tell us. Yeah, who wouldn't want to wear that around all summer long? It's the black frost. Yeah. Is what it is. It's great. And the navy frost is coming. Even better. Yeah, they're going to be great. Anyway, uh, what's on your agenda for spring break? Well, my girls are actually playing volleyball in Atlanta at the end of spring break. So our plan is let's head down early. Let's check out a city we haven't seen and we're going to go to Hilton Head for a few days. Okay. Before we make our way over to Atlanta, so okay, yeah, a little bit of a road trip, but uh, we'll see a couple of different parts of the country we haven't seen yet, and hopefully get a lot of sun. And how far is the drive to South Carolina? Um, it's like thirteen hours or so, I think. So, what's your strategy for driving? We're gonna leave Friday night, get as far as we can, and finish up on Saturday. You don't think you can make it? I don't know if I want to make it. I'd be cruising <laughs> at it like three in the morning, and that's you know that doesn't sit well with me. Well, I don't uh, handle can't it. you get some relief? Like, <laughs> well, one would think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, got it, got it. That's we'll leave it there. Okay, uh, I am also excited about spring break because I am going with my oldest boy, mm -hmm. Hunter, who's fifteen. Mm -hmm. the, just the two of us are going with his school on the World War II historical trip. So uh, it'll be good dad and lad time. Yeah. And, you know, London, Normandy, uh, Paris, wow. and Brussels. I'm not sure what the, Bru I don't know much about the World War II history in Belgium, but like it's in, it's part of the tour. So let's go, right? Yeah. What a cool tour. I'm really excited. You'll, about you'll, it. you'll hear some interesting things and you'll see some cities you've not seen. And exactly. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Lots of cool stuff to, to learn and, and witness firsthand. Yeah. But also, you know, you know how it is with the 15 year olds. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Especially if they have attitudes. You might, it'll be a, a roller coaster, maybe, huh? Well, I'm looking <laughs> to avoid the roller coaster, right? Like maybe, you know, work on. The relationship. There you right? go. Yeah. What a good time to do it. Yeah. I like it. That's the idea. Bonding. Yeah, that's right. So what are we talking about today? Uh, today, we're going to talk about um, a couple different things that came across. Uh, one was a statistic that said people are 50% more likely to trust a friend or a family member than they are an expert. And I found that to be really interesting and very true for our business, right? How many times do you... Uh, have somebody call you up and say, hey, my, my brother-in-law says this is a stock. We got to buy this stock, right? Or the neighbor says this thing's going to go huge. We got to get in on it, right? And they, these neighbors, these friends, these people have no knowledge, you know, no expertise, but they, because they say it, people believe it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can remember back to when I was like 19 mm -hmm. having those feelings, like a, a buddy, you know, read an article and I got to go buy the stock. Right. You know? And it, I got to buy it now. Like, I can't delay without right. delay, right? <laughs> right, because I'm going to miss the opportunity. That's right. right? You yeah. got to strike while it's hot. Yeah. But, you know, we see that with stock tips. We see that with, you know, taxes, right? CPA, I'm sure, has the same kind of problems they deal with, right? Lawyers, right? All this stuff. How many times do people say, oh, I put my, uh, I had my, my parents put me on their account so that I can have access to it in case they die? Well, we talked to the estate planner a couple weeks ago, right? And he said, bad idea. Don't do that. Right. That's right. So all of that um, was what was on my mind. And then as I came across an article that talked about a guy who had uh, this blooming trading career, right? He felt really confident with his trading ability. He felt like he knew the market. He knew how to get in and out at the right time. So he convinced his friends and family to give him $500,000 so that he could trade with. Guaranteed him a 10% return and I guess he keeps the rest, I guess, was his, his business model, right? Yeah. I wonder if, if uh, he was bragging so much and then people were like, can you take some of my yeah. money? Or if he was like, come on, you got to give it to me. You got to give it to me, right? Yeah. I wonder how the dy dynamic yeah. was with that yeah. part of it. Yeah, that's interesting. But the two, the two different things kind of came together for me to see. Well, I understand why people would do that, right? Because yeah. your friend or your family member who's confidently 
pitching something, people, you know, like the statistic says, they're likely to believe them, they're likely to trust them, they're likely to think they know what they're doing. Um, but it kind of, the, the way the, the article went, led me to another topic as well, though, is how difficult it is to trade, right? Oh, yeah. So basically, this guy's story is, I lost, I lost my shirt, right? I tried trading, 2022 was a tough year. Did you, did you have a lot of luck uh, buying and selling stocks in 22? No. <laughs> It was, a, it was a rough year. So many things were down. Everything was down um, that this guy lost a lot of money. Now it's fracturing the relationships and so on. But it led me to, to think about how hard it is to trade, you know, mm -hmm. and how many times we run into people who have this overconfidence, right? We had a pretty good run in the bull market for 10 years, right? And everybody thinks they got it figured out, you know, and it's, if it's not just, you know, it's, crypto, right? It's meme stocks. It's all these other, you know, hot investment ideas that people think they can, they can outsmart the market and, and make those picks and, and win. And we see time and time again that that proves to be a really difficult thing to do. All of a sudden on my Twitter feed, I'm getting these NFT ads. Mm -hmm. And that's something oh. that I just don't think I can ever understand. Okay. You know, I, I guess I understand it. It's just not for me. Mm -hmm. Right, like, you know, the digital image of you know, my dog, you right. know, like, so how is that worth a million dollars? You know, right. like, what if I just take a snapshot of it or a screenshot? Is that worth a million, or is that a copy, or is that fraud? Like, right. what's the point? <laughs> right? I, I just, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's that, but that's another. I hadn't thought about that, but that's another kind of segment of the market that was hot yeah. for so long. But there's. Countless stories about people who bought some, you know, one of these NFTs for mm -hmm. a million something, and now it's worth twenty grand. And nobody will buy it, right? yeah, or nothing. Yeah. You know, I mean, the meme stock. I remember reading tons of articles about GameStop and you know, all these, you know, AMC and all these yeah. these stocks that that blew up, and it was crazy. And then people thought they had it figured out, and they knew how to continually beat the shorts and and make all this money on them. And sure enough. Remember AMC went from like seven bucks to like 77? Mm -hmm. And I went to the movies mm -hmm. and there was no one there. I was yeah. the only one. Like, I'm not talking about like being in a movie that no one wanted to see where yeah. there's other movies that when I went, when I pulled into the parking lot from when I left, I was the only one. Right. Like, <laughs> there's nobody. And then I remember going to the gym and this guy was like talking about AMC and I'm like, dude, like this company is doomed. Like, right. no one goes. Right. You know? And he was pump, you know, talking about how it was going to be great and it was going to the moon. Mm -hmm. And now it's back to seven or less. Yeah, you know? less, I think. So sometimes those emotions just really, you know, get out of control. Right. And I think cryptocurrency is another great example of that, right? As Bitcoin was r going up in value, people, had, you had to get on. You're going to get left behind, right? And how many people bought Bitcoin at 40, 50, 60,000 a share? As opposed to, you know, this fifteen thousand. It was sixteen thousand like last month. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But now they don't want to buy it. Right, and now they don't yeah. want to buy it. Yeah. So it's really easy to get hung up on those things and yeah. caught up in the emotion of it. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I have two stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. One is when I was nineteen. Okay, mm -hmm. I was in college, and I was a, an intern at American Express Financial Advisors, and there was this advisor. So everyone falls victim to this stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one advisor was t talking about this penny stock and there's the ticker I think was EISQ and it was mm -hmm. like electronic identification something or other and their whole business model was the idea that they would have and this is before 9-11 okay mm -hmm. so they'd have a you know a driver's license or something that had digital certificates you know it was mm -hmm. like I don't know like some sort of uh, next level ID you know yeah, what I mean no more fake IDs yeah <laughs> So that was like going to be a whole big thing and like uh, law enforcement and, you know, passports. And, and I was like, oh, wow, yeah, that's the future, right? Mm -hmm. So like I had to like open up a brokerage account, put money in it. Like it couldn't get done fast enough, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So guess what? It's a zero, right? Yeah. <laughs> Just like so many others. And it was a penny stock. So these penny stocks you really got to watch out for. Yeah. So I had that, those emotions and I always remind myself of how I felt at that time, even mm -hmm. as a kid, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and now we're, we're more wise, right? We have some wisdom, we have some experience, we know better, right? Mm -hmm. But we still have to remind ourselves. Second story is a dear friend, okay? 
he works for like a Fortune 500 company and he likes the stuff. He likes, you know, investments and looking at the charts and mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a hobby, right? So since he's always talking about it at work, everyone's asking him, hey, Jim, you know, what should I do in my 401? And he's like, oh, you should do this and you should do that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're coming to him for advice, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So he decides he doesn't like his job anymore. He wants to become a financial advisor. Mm -hmm. So he leaves the Fortune 500 company, becomes an advisor. Guess what? Do you think those people are coming to him now <laughs> asking for 401k advice? My guess is uh, they enjoyed the free advice, but they're not interested in paying for the advice. Zero. Yeah. And he's like in disbelief, like, you know, how could this be, right? Like they mm -hmm. wanted the advice and now they don't, right? Yeah. And this is years ago, but you know, it, it definitely reminded me, <laughs> I definitely was reminded of it by this topic. Yeah, absolutely, right? It's kind of funny with the statistic we started talking about, right? They were more willing to trust him as a friend. Yeah, or a, yeah he was a friend. As, an expert. as soon as he becomes an expert, <laughs> they don't want it, it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So maybe it is about, maybe, you know, what did it say? Like distrust, maybe it's really just about the fee. Yeah, it could, I'm sure it weighs into it. Yeah, it's not, there's clearly multiple reasons, mm -hmm. but maybe that's one of the bigger ones. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? So, uh, you know, just kind of wrapping it up. I mean, I think trading, while it's exciting, while people get, you know, uh, you know, thrilled at the thought of a big win and putting all this money into a stock and seeing it double, you know, trading and timing the market is just, it, you know, people will say it's a fool's game, right? It's just so hard to do um, that, you know, we think, you know, you can't go wrong with slow and steady wins the race, right? Making sure you're using good investment advice, you're diversifying over long periods of time. Uh, and our, you know, and that's the way to win, you know, and if you have an itch to scratch with trading, you know, it's got to be a small part of what you're doing. I think it's, yes, it's, too, I like that. it's too risky to, to put, uh, you know, big stock in that kind of thing. I mean, in a world where 80% of mutual fund managers, these are professional stock pickers, mm -hmm. cannot beat the benchmark, yeah. which is unmanaged, mm -hmm. how are you going to do it right. as, a, as a novice? Right. So I sit on your couch reading Yahoo articles and stuff. You well, know? that's yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. So I right. think what you said at the very end, right there, was perfect. Where you can do it, but don't bet the farm on it, yeah. right? You know, you can have your core portfolio mm -hmm. and have a separate account that's over here that is your stock picking account. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Yes. So scratch the itch, yeah. but don't bet the farm. Yeah. That should be our new tagline. <laughs> it could catch on. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's catchy. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I guess that's it for this week. We'll see you soon after spring break. Hopefully, we'll both be more tan. Yeah. <laughs>